R is show that we can express the potentials in terms of charges and currents almost in the same way as in the uh, static case when we take the time retardation into effect into account. And now we're trying to go the next step and calculate the fields directly from these charges and currents. The electric fields, we have done that. For the magnetic fields, as always, we calculate the curl of A, which means from our expression for A, we just have to take the curl of, of J over R. Let me not write up every time we get R prime and GR as well. Same. So, what is that? Maybe to see what that is, let's calculate the, the x component of that. So, this would be d over dy of jz over r and minus d over dz j y over r, right? Okay, let's split that up again. That is dJz over dy over r plus jz d over dy of 1 over r, right? And the minus here. dJz over dy, remember again that this depends on r prime, there's no spatial dependence on r, only r prime, but there's the retarded time in here, right? So the retarded time, that derivative, gives us so dJz over dy gives us j dot z, right? And then the tr over Y, right? And that is J dot Z radian T R the Y okay? But we know that gradient T R, we've calculated that was minus R equal to C. Right? So this gives us minus j dot z our unit vector y component of this here, right? So that gives us this and this term essentially. And well, d over dy, 1 over r, d over dy, 1 over r, is of course gradient 1 over r. The y component of that, right? That's the definition of, of gradient. So, <coughs> and gradient 1 over r, but we had to calculate that at some point. The gradient of something that is function that's 1 over r, that means it's minus 1 over r squared. Right? So, that's minus. Our unit vector over r squared, we have the y component. Okay, so what we have here is minus, so remember this is minus j z dot, our unit vector y c, so j dot z, our unit vector over r c y component, right? Plus jy minus our unit vector and my, sorry, 
What did Mo Ali show? Let's raise that to her. Argument vector over R squared. One component. And then here we get a similar thing plus. general expressions now for any time-dependent current and charge densities to calculate electric dynamic. <clears throat> so most important compared now to the, to the static case if there's no time dependence. So all time derivatives are out and you only have this for the electric field. And that looks good. So actually just charge over distance squared. Interesting thing is the electric field, as we've seen in many places now, the electric field does not only depend on the charges, it also depends on the currents, on the time changing current. If the current is not changing, of course the electric field doesn't depend. Okay, so that's that's the complete diffic gauss equations or diffic gauss equations for fields. In most cases, actually, this turns out to be messier and more difficult to do than calculating the potentials first and then using the potentials to calculate the fields. But there may be simple situations where you can actually use this directly so you don't have to get the detour of calculating the potentials. Okay. And here we can come back to our example there and see if we can do that for exactly this case, right? So, for this case, let's see. So, hopefully, if we do this now for this current distribution, hopefully we'll get back to the same results. If it doesn't, then we have messed something up. So, so for this case, because we still. So for this case, we have, of course, still rho being zero everywhere. That also means 
that rho dot equals zero, right? We have J given here. <coughs> we have to figure out what is J, J dot. That's a little tricky, right? Because, uh, what's the time derivative? If we are at any given time, so if we look at function of time, or retarded time, and plot, plot the, the current at that time, or plots the value of j at that time, and the function is that, it is zero for a time less than zero, right? And then suddenly it jumps here, right? So this gives us about i naught. So that means, what is the time derivative? Anywhere except here, what's the time derivative of this function? We don't look at the point time equals zero. Derivative of some constant is zero, zero right? So it's zero everywhere except here, right? Anybody know how you can write a time derivative of a jump? What you want? You want the function, so you want j dot as some kind of function of time. You know that is zero everywhere where time is not equal zero. But you know, see the, see the current here at some time t1. You know j at t1, you can write as some integral from minus infinity to t1 of j dot of t. Right? That's how you, you invert the derivative, right? Integrate of the derivative gives you the function back. You know, at minus infinity, it's zero, at plus infinity, it's i naught. Right? So that should be i naught. Now, what kind of function can you come up with that is zero everywhere except the time zero? If you iterate over it, you get a value of 1 out. What kind of function does that? Okay. Right, delta function, exactly, very good. So, we can write this as so i naught z times the direct delta function, so where the retarded time is 0. That is our j naught. Let's see. If we can use that here. So for the electric field, so come back to that example there. Then we have our electric field equal. So that's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. We integrate. In that case, again, it's only z integration. And well, in that case, rho is zero, that drops out. The only thing we're left with is this thing. Right? So that's the only term left. So we have a minus there, which is kind of everything. The j dot and our i naught. Z component, right? And then this is really just delta of the retarded time over RC. All right, so we need to find the integral over this delta function. So this is delta of t minus r plus z squared plus s squared, right? Over C, right? Now we're integrating over Z, right? TR was T minus Z squared minus S plus S squared over C. In order to evaluate directly the standard distribution, can, can we do this directly without anything? So this would mean, of course, this gives you the value of 1 over R exactly with TR is zero, right? 
we do this directly or do we have to do something else here? We're integrating over Z. That's a delta function in time. So we have to convert the integration in dz or into some integration over retarded time. So that means we need to take the derivative here, dtr, as minus, so this doesn't depend on z, minus z over c square root z squared plus z. Right? Just take the derivative of this function, 2z over twice the square root. So that means the dz that we have here is minus c square root of z squared plus s squared over z tr, right? So we can write this as, so now minus, minus, those cancel out. So we have i naught z unit vector over 4 pi epsilon naught integral of dtr delta of dtr and the function that we have here this of course is minus c this is just r and over z dtr so the r's actually will cancel out the c's will cancel out as well so they're actually just left with the value of 1 over z So this means now the integral is trivial, right? Integral over time over the delta function gives you the value of this with TRC. So this gives you a not z unit vector over 4 pi epsilon not anywhere where TR is 0. So, but tr equals 0, we have calculated, we get tr equals 0, means that z was square root of ct squared minus s. So, the mean is of it. Plus or minus. So we get this once, essentially at the top, where we go back in time to just t equals zero and one at the bottom. So we have two of these solutions. They both give you the same value, plus on the top, minus on the bottom, you subtract one from the other, it gives you twice the value. So that gives twice, or essentially twice, and not, so it's that we call this here. Not which are not z over two pi epsilon not one over z function of z. Z not, right? Or is your pi not z over two pi epsilon not square root of C T squared minus s. And now the big moment to see if I got that right. That better be the same solution that we have here. And we see that I must have lost the C somewhere. And we find where I missed my factor of C.
all that means. I'm getting my vector C on the wrong side.
Now, we integrate here, so at some point where the time at which we receive everything is, is, is constant. So now, assume that we have some kind of volume here, say that moves with some velocity v in that direction. There's some length l. And we are just sitting far away somewhere in, in this direction. So light will need to go at say, some end of theta towards us. So this is this is to, towards our point of R, where we observe the fields in. Now we integrate this, we integrate over this volume here. But all from times where at the same time that this reaches us. But if we look at this extended volume, something back here has to have emitted earlier than anything here. But the problem is, so this is, say, this, this we call kind of time, time zero here. We find that. By the time we integrate over something back here, we must be at some negative time. Right? That means the action C, this, the back end of this volume, at some time earlier, right? So we actually measure some different length L prime. So the light from here reaches us now at the same time. So the extra time that that light has traveled here now is also the time that, that the volume has moved in this direction. So this, this extra time delta t over which we integrate is essentially our L prime minus L over the speed. But that extra time is also this length here. Well, this is L prime cosine theta, right? Over speed of light. The light takes the time L prime cosine theta over C to travel. So that means the volume, we can solve this. So this is the same time. We can solve this for the volume that we actually measure. Yeah, so 1 minus V over C cosine theta equals L. Or that means the length in this direction over which we have to integrate so that everything reaches us at the same time is the actual length or the actual volume divided by some correction factor 1 minus v over c cosine theta. So the volume, no matter how small the charge actually is, even if it's almost down to a point charge, we still have to take this light travel timing effect, its contraction factor, into account. So that means the actual expression that we'll get for for the potential of a point charge, and we'll, we'll come back to this point next week, I just wanted to introduce this quickly. That means the potential of a point charge you can write as the charge over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 minus V over C cosine theta. And if we now look at The, the geometrical situation here, so we have our vector r towards where we measure the potential, so this is our v of r t. We have the velocity vector v here, this is our angle of theta. Then v over c cosine theta is what? 
dot I unit vector of the C, right? That's the definition of the dot product. V dot R gives you V R cosine theta, or if we do that with a unit vector, yes, V dot I unit vector of the C. So we can write this. Or So this potential we can write as Q over both I that's not not one minus E dot R over R C or the way this is sometimes written is that we put an R C out here, so it's Q uh, R C over except for this light travel time contraction factor. And then the same with the <coughs> with the scale up, uh, the vector potential. Well, the vector potential can of course write uh, you have this one charge, then J plus is just the velocity times rho, right? That times times rho. What was velocity times rho? So you really just get the factor of the velocity in there, and everything else is the same. So you can write this as Q R C B. And remember that instead of the four prime, so over this is U not over Or in terms of epsilon naught, if you want to write this in terms of epsilon naught, then this gives us 1 over c squared. But, and then, except for the v and the factor 1 over c squared, we have the same expression as here. So we can write this as the v r t over c squared times the particle's velocity. We'll get back to that next week and then also use this to calculate the actual fields of a point charge, which may actually be maybe one of the most important things if you want to go into astrophysics because all of radiation theory is based on the results that we will find you next week. Well, the radiation that comes out of these, or for the fields that come out of these. Any questions? Comments? Um, not. Then, Michael, we'll see you on Thursday for the tutorials. And I'll see you next week. <laughs>